Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the G Knit and welcome to episode 22 of my GBS Zero build. In the previous few episodes, we've been doing a lot of work on the wiring and we've got that all complete now. The headlights, the starter, everything is pretty much wired in. We've still got a little bit more to add in the front corner, but I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a break from wiring this week and move on to some mechanical work. So in previous episodes, you also saw that we've been taking bits to the machine shop because the engine that you see in the chassis has just been a mock-up engine that I've just used to sizing things up. Our actual engine has been going backwards and forwards from the machine shop getting bored out, getting skimmed and getting balanced so everything is together. And the last thing you saw was we left the head there to get skimmed and as promised, I got a phone call the next day that it was ready for collection. So that's what I did. Since picking that up, as you saw last week in the Zafira episode, it has started snowing here and the temperature has dropped. It's been snowing for nearly a whole week now. So we've just been having fun with the kids. We've built a massive six foot snowman and he's still just about hanging on at the moment. But the weather is slowly starting to warm up and this is actually the first day that the temperature has been above zero. So I've come down to the G unit to make a start on assembling the cylinder head. And something else you may have noticed is I am out of the moon boot. I'm not ready for any marathons yet, but my foot is now out of the boot and it's not too bad. As long as I keep it nice and tight in some work boots, it is feeling a lot better. So something I've not been able to do for a long time, I'm gonna take a stroll over to the sticker wall. This is actually the Coscar cylinder head off my red Astra in the corner that many of you will already know. So I know personally that it came off a running and driving car and we never had any problems with overheating or any head gasket issues. So all it required was a really light skim just to face up the bottom of the cylinder head ready for the new gasket. When I bought this for the Astra, it had already had lots of work done to it. It's fully ported and polished, had enlarged ports, it had oversized exhaust valves, it had full polished combustion chambers and it had Ken upgraded valve springs, which is gonna be perfect for our normally aspirated life where we're gonna be revving it a lot higher. Now, although this did come off my running and driving car, that was about 12 or 13 years ago and it's just been sitting on a shelf ever since. So sitting there for over a decade on a shelf, things can happen. So I'm just gonna give it a full check over and inspection to make sure it's all okay before we put it back together. Before I took the valves out, I did put some petrol in the top of the ports just to check if all the valves were seating nicely and in cylinder four, some of the inlet valves, they were just leading a little bit through. So what I think I'll do, I'll just lap all the valve seats in just to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. And when I took it apart, of course, I put everything in order and organization is key. So I know which valves go in which holes. I kept all the valves in their correct order by putting 16 holes in this box. And every time I took the valve out of the head, I'd put it in its corresponding hole. I wrote cam belt up this end and dizzy up this end so I knew the box this way round corresponds to the cylinder head here. Although all the exhaust valves and all the inlet valves are the same size, initially when the head was built, they were machined in to their valve seats. So every one is slightly different. So you always keep them in order and that makes lapping it in so much easier because it is almost already there. We're not really gonna have to do a lot of work because there's no real pitting and everything looks in great condition. So to hold the valves, you've got this little plunger, which sticks on like that, and that goes in there. You wanna put a bit of oil, this is just normal engine oil, down the shaft, because usually these just go up and down, but we're gonna be twisting it and rotating it, so we just want it lubed up nicely, and that goes down the port like that, and we can face it in like so. There's two types of cutting compound, there's the coarse and the fine, Usually with the course, if you've got a really bad pitted head or you've got some problems in there, you'd really go to town on the course, then polish it up with the fine. We're all pretty good here, so I probably could get away with just the fine, but I think I will just give it a rough up with the course just to make everything fit nicely and then go over it with the fine and we'll have a perfectly polished foul seats. I'm having a bit of trouble with the plunger keeps getting unstuck as I'm spinning it. I've cleaned it all up and everything's all nice and clean, but I think it's just, this is probably 15 plus years old and the rubber's just getting a bit hard and cracked. So I'm just gonna pop to the shop and get another one.
Here's our new plunger, and I've tested out the new electric window and successfully got a McDonald's. So we'll get my nutrients back in me and then crack on with these valves. And that's how it's all done in the coarse grade. So now let's go on to the fine grade. And these should all polish up nicely. Wow, what a workout that was. I even had to turn the heater off for a bit because I was getting such a sweat on. That's the most exercise I've done in a very long time. So we had to do all 16 valves in the coarse compound and then all 16 valves in the fine cut. And that's given a really, really nice smooth finish on the valve. So the whole object of this is when the valve is shut, that creates a completely airtight seal. So all the combustion stays in the chamber and we get all the bang going down to the crank. So what we've got to do next is give everything a real good clean up because with the grinding paste, how it works is there's little bits of grit. So as you're rubbing the two faces together, they machine themselves perfectly. So we don't want any of that if any's got in the valve or anywhere else, because any movement that's just gonna rub away and grind itself in places we don't want it. So now we're gonna give everything a complete clean up. And I've got that all looking absolutely spotless. Looks amazing down there. You can see how much work has been done in the head before. All the valve guides have all been chopped with the port in to make perfect flow in there. And you can see how big the bores have been taken out. It's like something out of Star Trek. All been knife edged in there. So I think we're gonna make some good power with this head. I've been getting everything absolutely spotless because we are pretty much now ready for final assembly. So all the gasket flanges for the exhaust, all the exhaust ports, cylinder head are all spotless. And all the valve seats are looking perfect. We're gonna have no trouble there. Really happy with how they've come out. So now we've just got to clean up all these bits, ready for assembly. So that's all the valve gear cleaned up and inspected and everything looks absolutely fantastic. The Kent valve springs and all the valves all look great and all the retainers until we got to the collets. And something, a bit alarmed about, all the collets have got cracks in them. So this is how it was when I was running it in the Astra. So I don't know if this is from over revving because it did get a lot of abuse. You can see there, they've all got cracks in them running the whole length. So I don't know if it is close to dropping a valve, but every single one has got it. So a very lucky escape there. 
So I'm not going to refit these. I'll get a set of new collets. Everything else looks fine. But it's just strange. They're all like it. It's a bit hard to focus because they're so small. Here's my finger for comparison. You can see that one there. So yeah, that's a bit of a worry. So up until discovering those collets, we were all ready to go. I've got the cylinder head all cleaned and blown out, all the oil waves, water waves, everything is blown out spotless, so we are all ready to go on that. All the valve gear is all cleaned up, spotless and ready to go. I've got the L-ring top end gasket set, so we've got the valve stem seals in there that need to go in before the valves, and we were all ready for full assembly, up until seeing all those cracks. So I'm not quite sure what's caused them or if they've always been there because when I bought the cylinder head for the Astra, it was already fully assembled and I just bolted it on and ran it like that. So they could have always been there. Maybe it is from when I was using it because the Astra did get a lot of abuse. Every time we went out, it was just flat out racing every day, all time until it blew up, then we'd rebuild it and it was flat out once again. And I'm also really surprised and pleased to see the condition inside the combustion chambers, because this was back in the mid 2000s when it was only millionaires like Rip Draper that had aftermarket ECUs and mapping sessions. We just had standard ECUs. I had copy Evo 5's chips in these and we just used to wedge as much boost as a turbo could flow inside and hope for the best. So with that in mind, I'm really surprised that nothing ever got melted in there. It all looks great and I'm really excited to see how this cylinder head flows in normally aspirated form. Because as you see, it's had a lot of work done and with the throttle bodies and the big bore exhaust and I've got high lift cams as well, this thing is just going to sing. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to get a set of collets ordered for this so that'll be ready for next week and I can assemble all this together. It's all ready to go. And then once that's done, we've got the bits in for the bottom end as well. So we've got the block and the crank here. We've got the Amiga high compression pistons. We've got the steel rods. Everything is ready to go back together. So we're going to get all this built up and have a few mechanical weeks. But don't worry, we will be back on wiring again very, very soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe because there's going to be lots more C20XE red top engine building and lots of other bits on the kit car. Give this video a like if you've liked what you've seen. But until next time, make sure you have fun.